The next thing I'd like to try out is text. Now, if we're going to be adding something to our stage, it's a good idea to add a new layer. I'm going to click on the topmost layer. We'll press the New Layer button, and that'll put the new layer right above the one I had selected. And the text that I'd like to put on this layer will be the button labels that we'll use eventually for our website. So I'm going to name the layer by double-clicking on Layer 3, and we'll change the name to Website Sections. I'll hit Enter. And I can even move my layers out just a little bit so we can see all those names. And let's try out the text tool. For our finished project, I'd like to use white text for these labels. And it'd be kind of hard to work with white text on a white background. So let's change the background right now so that we can see things a little bit better. I've got my document properties sitting right in front of me because I have nothing selected on my stage. So I'm just going to click on that stage background color. And I'm going to go up to the darkest, almost black, but not quite black gray. Now we can go over to our text tool and let's set that up. Now there's a good chance that you've worked with a lot of these properties before, so it won't be anything new for you. My text tool shows me what kind of text I'm going to be creating, including things like the font, the style, the size, and the color. Now I'd like to use a nice sans serif font, so I'm just going to choose Arial. You can choose any font you like that you have installed. There's Arial. I'll go ahead and leave it at regular, and I'd like it a little bit bigger. So you notice I have the same kind of control here. I can either click and drag, or I can double click and type. I'd like 21 points, so I'm going to double click. We'll just type in 21 and hit enter. And as I said before, I'd like white text, so I'm just going to click on the color chip and choose white. Now all I have to do is click and type. And the first label that we're going to have is for the home section of our website, so I'm just going to click and type home. Now it looks like my text was right aligned, so let me check that out. We'll see that in the paragraph properties down here at the bottom, and sure enough, I have a right align setting on mine. As you've probably seen with a lot of other tools in Flash, the settings will stick to whatever was used last, but you can change them at any time. Now once you've got text type, there's two ways to control what you're changing in the type. You can either select the text if you still have the text tool active and make changes to the text, or you can switch over to your selection tool Notice the text now has a blue outline around it, and any changes you make will be to the entire text field. I'll just click this over to left align, and I'll pull it onto my stage just a little bit. Now I've got a few more sections to add. I'm going to go ahead and add these labels in the same layer, and we can do that whenever we want. We can always split it out later. I need some more text, so I'm going to click to deselect the text that I've got, and we'll go select the text tool again and we'll type the next section label. Now the website we're making is for a photographer, so we're going to type portfolio. I'll just click with the text tool. It's going to keep the same settings we had before, and I'll go ahead and type. The other two sections are going to be exhibitions and contact. So while I've got the text tool, we'll just click and type again. That's going to be exhibitions. And finally, the last one, it's going to be contact. Now all we need to do is set these up nicely. So I'm just going to go back to my normal selection tool. I can select all four. Now since they're off by themselves, I could just drag a marquee around them, but I could also use shift select. And we can go back up to our align panel to arrange them. Since I only want to arrange those four items, I'm going to turn off the two stage option. And I'll click right align to line them up right next to our photo. We can also use another option, the spacing option. This will set the space between the items to be the same, and it'll use whatever the topmost and the bottommost item are for measurement. Now I can just click away from everything and move that bottom contact up just a little bit and move home down, reselect them, and then we'll go try that option. I'll use the vertical spacing, and there you can see it evened them all out nicely. We'll click away, and that actually looks like a pretty good layout. 